oh, what a night, right? A night for remembering, a night for rejoicing, a night for celebrating, a night that will live in the heart of God's children forever. But wait, where are my manners? Allow me to introduce myself. I'm Gabriel. Maybe you've heard of me. Gabriel. My name translates from the Hebrew language and it means God is my strength. And oh, if that isn't the absolute truth. God is my strength. Y'all, you see, I'm one of God's archangels. Not to brag or anything. It just means that I'm one of his higher ranking angels of the heavenly host. And for thousands of years, I have delivered God's messages to God's children. That's what an angel does, after all. In fact, the word angel comes from the Greek word, angelos, which literally means messenger. But at any rate, I've had the honor of delivering messages for our God on so many occasions. You know, sometimes what God has to say is so very personal and intimate. But other times, God's voice is mighty and strong, and it is meant to be heard, heard by anybody who chooses to listen and be changed. But no matter whether it's a soft, gentle, and encouraging word, or a fierce, demanding, challenging word, I guarantee you every single time God's words are exact and true and perfect. When the maker of the heavens and the earth just takes a moment to speak, it is more wonderful and more beautiful than anybody or any being could possibly express. So it's always with joy that I proudly deliver and proclaim God's word to his beloved children. You know, centuries and centuries ago, God chose a particular group of people to speak to people of Israel, the Hebrew people. Those were his beloved, and they were to be the storytellers that would enable and further and act out God's plan here on earth. One of the first times I brought a divine message to one of God's children was when I helped Daniel truly devoted servant of God. Daniel was a prophet who was an example to God's people on how to live a holy life. And I came to Daniel one time and helped him interpret a, a really confusing vision he had. I helped Daniel understand the dream that God had given him that foretold God's plan for his people. And then there was that time I appeared to Zechariah, and I told him the glorious good news about his wife Elizabeth. Elizabeth would bear him a son, even in their old age, a son who they would name John. Yes, that John, John the Baptist, that fierce, unconventional, courageous prophet who proclaimed the coming of Christ. And as a side note here, let me tell you that Zechariah had the gall to doubt that God would be able to give him a son given his old age and Elizabeth's advanced years. Truth be told, he actually laughed in my face. Well, you may know how 
He wasn't able to say a word again until that baby John was presented at the table, at the temple and given his name. But anyway, back to the messages that I've delivered throughout time. I think that probably my favorite all-time message that God ever had me deliver was to a young girl named Mary. Mary. Such a young girl, no older than 14. She was a pure, faithful young woman. A girl of deep, profound faith and utter and complete devotion to her God. Mary lived in a small town, a little village called Nazareth, a small hill town on a very busy caravan, caravan route. And she was chosen by God, get this, to be the mother of God's own son she was chosen because she was full of grace and faith and virtue. She lived every single day deeply connected to God, having a strong, fierce faith that most young women at that time did not have. Mary was betrothed to a fine young man, a strong, faithful man named Joseph. God sent me to Mary before she and Joseph had officially been joined as husband and wife. The message that God had for Mary was one of astounding significance. Not only for her, but for everyone for all of eternity. What a remarkable, intimate, tender, earthly visit that was. I remember, like it was just yesterday, when I first appeared to Mary here in her room, she was alone, and, and I must admit, I was a bit surprised at just how young she was. So very young and innocent to be charged with bringing the Son of God into the world. Last for very long. For I reminded myself that I know with utter conviction, with all that I am, that God's wisdom is always perfect. And as surprised as I was at first, that didn't hold a candle to the astonishment and even fear that fell over Mary when I appeared. Greetings, Mary, I said. I remember how she gasped in fear and clutched at her chest, pulling her cloak around her. And I said to her, don't be afraid, Mary. I said it as calmly and soothingly as I could. I wanted to reassure her, to comfort her, and quench those fears. And I continued, Mary, you have found favor with God. Well, you know how the rest of the story plays out, or you wouldn't be here tonight, right? Because tonight we celebrate Mary's willingness to be the vessel that brought Emmanuel, God with us, into this world. And tonight, too, we celebrate Joseph's absolute trust and complete obedience to his God. And most of all, tonight we celebrate and rejoice in the greatest gift ever given in the entire history of creation. And that is, of course, God's great gift of our Redeemer, our Savior. We celebrate and rejoice the Son of God becoming fully human, yet fully divine. And entering this 
small and chaotic world in the form of a tiny, innocent baby. Tonight, we celebrate the birth of the king of all kings, a king who entered this world not inside some splendid, opulent palace, but in mothers and aunts and midwives, but instead by a loving and faithful yet scared earthly father. And tonight we celebrate a baby who was welcomed into the world not by family, but instead surrounded by sheep and cattle. A baby laid not in a clean, soft bed of linen, in a freshly woven basket, but who was instead wrapped in, wrapped in strips of cloth from his father's dirty cloak. A baby who was laid in a not in a handcrafted, fit for a king cradle, but who was instead laid in a roughly hewn animal feeding trough. Tonight we celebrate a birth, not announced by trumpets and a royal proclamation, but instead a birth announced by a brilliant star in the sky and a host of heavenly voices. A birth not first shared among the royal family, but instead a birth announcement that was shared with a group of lowly, dirty shepherds who were guarding their sheep on a nearby hillside. Don't be afraid, they were told bring you good news that will bring great joy to all people. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David. When I think about God's message that I brought to Mary that night so very long ago, I think about how that message changed the lives, not just of Mary, also the countless numbers of people for centuries after Mary's part of the story was over. And among that countless number, that immense, immeasurable number of people is you. You, my friend, have been given the greatest gift of all time. The gift of God himself. The gift of God's very own son. Emmanuel, God with us. And because God is with you, you will never, ever walk alone. Never again do you need to be concerned about what eternity might look like. Never again do you need to live in worry or fear. Never again do you need to face uncertain days or long, dark nights of hopelessness. Never again. For you have been given this night, Emmanuel, God is with us.